Good morning, Eastern Hills Church. Welcome to church. If you want to stand with us, this is, if you uh, have not found out yet, a worship together service. So we have kids in the worship center with us. So if you're a kid in the worship center, raise your hand. Simon says, raise your other hand. Put them down. Oh, man. Here we go. I got my kids over here. Well, welcome to the church. And uh, if you're watching online, we're so excited that you're with us this morning. We're going to sing this morning about the wonder of our Creator. And I just want you to think about the wonder that you had in your Christmas season. And maybe it was walking into the room where the Christmas tree was yesterday. Maybe it was seeing all the crazy gifts that you had piled up. Um, or maybe it was just the wonder of getting to do life together with your family. We're going to sing about that wonder today. And as we do, I just want you to picture what it would be like for God to show up that way in your life. To see that kind of wonder happen before your eyes. And we're just going to worship Him with that mindset, with that heart, with that expectancy, and with that joy. Are you guys ready? Can we just clap to get ourselves moving? All right, here we go. Sing it. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the water for my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, Cloud by day is a sign that you are with me. A fire by night is the guiding light to my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the water for my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God, you're the God who comes to me, Lord of every Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. torn apart the sea you have led me through the deep hallelujah hallelujah we're just going to sing our testimony it says you stepped into my Egypt you took me by the hand you marched me out of freedom into the promised land before we sing these words, I just want you to get a picture in your mind of what the Lord has done. What can you say of where He has stepped you out of Egypt? Where have you already seen Him working? Just picture that right now. Just take a moment and say, thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing this the full conviction and soul testimony that Jesus Christ is capable of doing what he said he can do. Ready? As you stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you walked me out of freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done swallowed up forever by the fury of your love you stepped me 
out of Egypt You took me by the hand You marched me into freedom Into the promised land Now I will not forget you, God I'll sing of all you've done Death is swallowed up forever By the fury of your love You're the God who fights for me You're the very victory Hallelujah Part the sea, you have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, oh. Let's just sing this one more time and just declare just our voices. You've led me, you've fought for me. Cause you're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, With this next worship song, if you are just visiting us for the first time, maybe you came Christmas Eve and you wanted to check us out again, or maybe online, you're just feeling God's presence and want to know more about Him. While we continue worshiping, I just want you to open your heart and open your mind to whatever it is that God wants to show you today. We've been worshiping with God for years. We know that one day we're going to be able to enter his throne room and sing with all the angels and all the saints that have gone before us. And I, my prayer is that you'll have a taste of that today as you worship with us. You give life. You are love. To the darkness you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour. It's your breath in our 
stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop even when even when I don't feel it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I can feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, way maker Way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's sing that again, Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are, God. And we are thankful that at the end of this strange year of 2020, that we can come and declare the promise maker that you are. That in spite of everything that we walk through, even though we don't necessarily see it, no, we might not feel it, you're still working, you're still moving. And we're still thankful for that. We're thankful for the relationships and 
the prayers that have been answered and the strength that has been tested in us and the moments that we've had that we've needed to depend on you and surrender to you in different things throughout this year. We thank you for the hope that we have that we can declare in the midst of a world that seems to be falling apart at moments. God, thank you for being the way maker and the miracle worker. As we look to the future, God, we believe that there's so much more in store for what you have for us. And as we set this year behind us, God, we can't wait to see what you do next. Because even in the midst of this hard year, you've been working and you've been bringing us to a place that we need to be. So God, continue to show us. I pray for those here today that might feel uh, just overwhelmed. Relationships, um, finances, whatever it might be. God, today, you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. We could stand here for so many of us to declare testimonies of your faithfulness. Today, God, you still have a plan for each one of us. So if there's somebody here today that's feeling that, I just pray that they know and you'd speak to their heart to let them know that you're with them and you care for them and you are going to work for your glory and for their good. God, thank you for all you've done. We give you praise today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We get the chance today to be blessed by Pastor Enosh Tupali. He's been with us as a volunteer pastor for months. He's going to tell more of his story, but I've just been blessed to get to know him and to hear his heart from ministry. And so would you welcome him as he comes and shares with us today? Thank you, Pastor Justin. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the most precious and, and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an unprecedented and challenging year 2020 has been. First of all, I want to thank God, and I thank Pastor Pat, Pastor Mike, Pastor Justin, the world-class staff here, and uh, amazing worship teams, and the wonderful saints of this church for loving me and giving a beautiful opportunity to walk together all these months in these trying times and to serve him for his glory and honor. Indeed, it is a blessed honor and a privilege for me to stand before you all today to serve our almighty God on this last Sunday of 2020 here at this beautiful Eastern Hills Church. My name is Pastor Enosh Sunandan Tupli. I'm a volunteer missionary pastor here I was born in a beautiful uh, coastal district by the Bay of Bengal Sea, a city called Kakinara in a state called Andhra Pradesh of Southeast India. I was raised in a Christian family. My schooling days and my fears of facing tomorrow, I want to tell you all, especially the children who are here, I got bullied for being dark. Yes, you heard me right. People think of India as a slumdog millionaire or the movie Mahatma Gandhi or something. India is called as the subcontinent with over 20 languages and over 1,000 dialects. There are about um, 1.4 billion people. People of all colors and faiths are in India. India is the fourth biggest uh, economy in the world. There are many extremely rich and poor people in India. Few seniors in my school used to um, call me hey brownie or uh, dark uh, chocolate in Telugu. I used to say that no one can choose the color before their birth. God created me beautifully this way and I'm proud of his remarkable creation. I used to say that never brag about your health, wealth, education, social status, or anything. Things can turn around in, in no moment, in no time. God saw that. God didn't forget that. God did something about it. And I used to get appreciations and applauses for being a bright student, especially in sports and music. God removed my fear and helped me to face tomorrow. I got harassed for being a Christian. Some students of other faiths used to sing some Christian songs in front of me to tease me. Their mocking behavior involved laughing at me 
in an unkind way. God saw that. God didn't forget that. God did something about it. I was made the leader for the whole school to lead assembly meetings and other activities. God removed the, my fears and helped me to face tomorrow. I was looked down on for many things, including the way I used to speak in English during those schooling days. I, it was so humiliating. God saw that. God didn't forget that. God did something about it. Now these people look up to me for the way God has been working through my life and how blessed I am. They're so, they're so amazed to see the work of God in my life. God removed my fears and helped me to face tomorrow. 23 years ago, exactly on this day, which is the last Sunday of December 1997, few family friends, my siblings, and I have heard a powerful message of life, death, and eternity. It was a message of gospel of Jesus Christ by my mother. In the year 1998, January 1st, we all got baptized by my father, just like Pastor Matt baptized his children. We all have witnessed it here two days ago on the Christmas Eve. Well, I didn't eat... Well, I didn't get dunked like Caleb got dunked for his baptism. I can never forget that. In year 2000, my college days started. I thought of becoming a doctor just like my mother, and I took science group in college. I used to have friends from different religions, and we used to end up in a discussion whose God is the best amongst all. And one of my friends, he asked me this question, why couldn't Jesus save himself when he was crucified on the cross? if he was God. I was a new born again believer and I didn't know how to give an answer to him and all the friends at that point in time. They mocked at Jesus. It was so horrible. I, I cannot describe it uh, to you all. I fasted and prayed. I said, Lord, you came to this world, died with a purpose, rose again with a purpose. And if I don't give an answer to my friends, I'm a failure. You're not a failure. Kindly help me out in this situation. Then I sensed his calling to know more about his word and to serve him. I went to Bangalore City to Berrien Bible College to, um, to know more about his word, uh, which is affiliated to Bob Jones University here. And I graduated in Bachelor's in Theology, and in Hyderabad I graduated in Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling. I used to borrow guitars from my friends in seminary. Wherever I used to learn in theology class um, the attributes of God, I used to translate those words into my Telugu language and started composing, writing songs. I wrote about 52 songs and produced two albums in 2005 and in recent years. Those CDs reached out to many people. Even today, many young people are still singing these songs in their churches and concerts. After many years of training in biblical seminary, I invited my friends over for my birthday dinner. And after the dinner, they were all talking about uh, where they are working. One of them said that he was working for a big hospital as a doctor. Some said that they are working for uh, big software companies in Silicon Valley of India. They asked me, what are you doing? Have you become a doctor? I said, no. I said that I work for the creator of the universe and I still do open heart surgeries with gospel. The worldly surgeries are for a limited time, but the surgeries that I do with the help of God are for eternal life. And I shared gospel with them. In 2009, before my ordination, my dad told me and everyone in a Thanksgiving prayer meeting what happened in 1989 crusades in India when I was four years young. I was prophesied over that during the last days that I would go to the ends of the earth and preach gospel and bring people to Christ. My dad and mom kept it secret for 20 years and they were waiting upon God in prayer. They didn't tell me all those years. When I saw that part, before that, I asked my dad, is that true, dad? He told me, 
uh, to check the VHS cassettes at home. When I saw that part, I got goosebumps. It was like a double confirmation to me that God had this great plan in my life. In an amazing way, God opened doors in my life for me to travel to many countries like Australia, European countries, Middle East, and about 31 states in the United States to preach gospel in the last 11 years. God powerfully used me to preach only gospel. From the poor people to the judges and lawyers and courts, police officers and uh, many higher officials and many events. With God's help, I have reached out to millions of people through televangelism in the last few years. This year, I came in March for conferences and I had preaching engagements. Everything got shut down due to COVID and all my travels and plans got canceled. I was in Pennsylvania till April last week. My friend Sirish works in IT for m and Bank here. He and his wife are my best friends from high school in India. He brought me from Pennsylvania to Buffalo in May. On Father's Day, I wanted to worship our Heavenly Father in a corporate worship. I thought, let me do this just for one day because there is COVID all over. And I was checking the news that churches were opening with limited registrations for services. I googled for churches near me and I found Eastern Hills Church. I was amazed because in India, we have Eastern Hills and Western Hills for hundreds of kilometers. And my city, Rajamundry, is surrounded by Eastern Hills. I saw the website and faith, and then I came walking to the church because my friend's place is very close by, which is in Palmdale Drive behind Tops. I came to Eastern Hills Church on the Father's Day in June. I met Pastor Mike, and we introduced ourselves to each other at the entrance. He ushered me into the sanctuary, and I sat there. Pastor Pat preached that day. I felt like home. I had Lord's Supper after three months. It was so special. Mrs. Julie Robinson stopped her car while I was walking back, and she asked me to please get in as it was so, it was very a hot, sunny day. She told me that she was uh, a greeter at, uh, on that day at the entrance, and she heard me saying that I'm a pastor at the entrance while I was talking to Pastor Mike, and she gave me a ride back home. Since then, I've started coming to the Bible studies and her uh, husband, uh, with her husband Jim and uh, to the Sunday worship services. Men at uh, Monday Bible study showered their brotherly love for me, and Pastor Pat heard about me. He invited me over to interview me in July during the worship services. I shared my testimony and uh, the persecution Christians are facing in India. It was a blessing to have that opportunity. Pastor Pat and Pastor Justin spoke with me and they encouraged me to, to come on board to um, be a volunteer staff to serve God and also to write the book uh, on my approach in evangelism. And the book I'm writing uh, is called uh, Rubber Band Evangelism. Sister Andrea and the worship team are so kind enough to have me um, on board with the worship team to worship God by singing and playing music. Due to COVID rise in India, I have applied uh, five months ago and I've been waiting for the uh, approval for the extension of my stay here. I'm hoping that I would get it in January or February. Since March, due to this pandemic, everything got changed in my life. It is painful and a challenging time, but God is good. I especially want to thank those who prayed for my father, especially the pastors, the staff, and the men's group for their generosity. It was one of the most painful last two weeks in my life, not being there when my dad was going through this. My father had the surgery and they successfully implanted the pacemaker. He got the most expensive and highly durable American-made pacemaker. He's doing well. 
by the grace of God. I want to thank each and every one of you for praying for me and my family. Won't you bow being in prayer with me? Lord, you are great and you do miracles so great. Remind us, O oh God, that you master in miracles, that whatever the world has said cannot be done. You've done it. You've done it time and again. Lord, I pray that you use this frail and fragile flesh for the pro proclaiming of gospel and goodness of your glory. Lord, you and I know that I'm not worthy, and I stand and speak for you. Lord, just take my mouth, my mind, my heart, and my everything. I love there to be no gap between your will and my words. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. In Jesus' precious and perfect name we do pray. Amen. I would like to entitle my uh, sermon, Everyone Wants to Know What Happens in the Future. A man went to a palmist. The palmist uh, said to this man, by looking at the lines in his palm, someone very near to you is going to get disappointed. And the man said, wow, you're good. You're so good. For you will be disappointed to know that I forgot my wallet in the house. People want to know what happens, what's going to happen next year, next month, next day, next hour, next minute. There are many who want to know what will happen after we leave this world. Gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer. Only God and his word reveals us what will happen in future. Job 14, 14 says, if a man dies, shall, we live, shall he live again? It is one of the questions in the Old Testament uh, of Bible asked by the namesake. Hebrews 9.27, we give and get appointments for many things uh, in life and death. It's an appointment we will all one day keep. Ecclesiastes 3.11 Many people instinctively have an understanding that the death of our physical bodies is not the end of our existence. Romans 1.18, even the one who professes to be an atheist knows this. The atheist may say he does not believe in God. But when he hit, his head hits the pillow at night, he is left to his own thoughts. He knows there is a creator. He knows the truth, yet he suppresses the truth in unrighteousness. Whatever determines where we spend eternity once our appointment with death comes. Most people have this vague notion that as long as their good deeds outweigh their bad deeds, God will let them into heaven. We think of ourselves as good people because we tend to evaluate our goodness by comparing ourselves to other people. If I compared myself to bad guys, criminals, I'm a pretty good guy. I've never done anything, any of those things. But there's bad news, really bad news. God does not evaluate our goodness by comparing us to other people. He evaluates our goodness by comparing us to himself. And compared to God, none of us is good. All of us have broken God's moral laws. All of us have told lies. We're liars. Nearly all of us have stolen something. We are thieves. We have taken God's name in vain. We are blasphemers. We have looked upon others with physical lust. We are adul adulterous at heart. Matthew 5.28 We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 We are rebels. Isaiah 1.28 Left in our sin, not only we are alienated from God, Colossians 1.21. We are his enemies, Romans 5.10. When we break our uh, laws on earth, there is penalty to be paid. When we break the laws of God, there is also penalty to be paid. When we break earthly laws, the penalty is temporal. When we break God's law, however, the penalty is eternal because God is eternal. 
But God is a good God. People object. A good God would never send anyone to hell, they surmise. The, good, the goodness of God is not the assurance of the, the sinner's rescue, but, the, but rather the guarantee that justice will be done. God is good. Let's say a man committed murder and his crime was caught on a video surveillance camera. The man was arrested. The murder weapon was found with the suspect's fingerprints all over it. Multiple eyewitnesses testified he was the murderer. The suspect has his day in, a, in court and is found guilty. It's, uh, it's an open and shut case. The judge says uh, to the convicted murderer, you have just been found guilty of murder. Do you have anything to say for yourself before I pass sentence? The convicted murderer responds, Well, judge, I think you're a good judge. And because you're a good judge, I think you should let me go. And after all, I've only committed one murder on one day. All the days of my life have I never murdered anyone. What if the judge replied, You know, you're right. I'm a good judge, so I think I'll just let you go. You're free to leave, uh, have a nice day, and uh, the com convicted murderer walks out of the courtroom and f a free man. Would that be a good judge? No. That would be a terrible judge. That would be a terrible judge. A good judge must, must punish crime. God is the ultimate good judge, and he must punish sin. In fact, God's love is fully demonstrated in that he does not give us what we deserve. That is the beautiful thing in Romans 5, 8, we see, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God's love is demonstrated in that even though we were yet, uh, we were yet sinners in rebellion against God and deserved nothing but his wrath, God sent his only son to die in our place. That is the penultimate expression of love. Hell is a place of no joy, no peace, no hope, no love. The question then is this. How can a good God, who is holy and just pardons sinners without compromising his righteous injustice, righteous justice, there is goodness. Why the good news is so good, Here's the good news. Please turn to, your, to, to the person next to you and say, God loves you. God solely by his grace has made a way. Indeed, the only way for us to escape his wrath. God has made a way for us, his enemies, Romans 5.10, to be reconciled to himself. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the earth. He was, he was and is fully God and fully man. He is one person in two natures, human and divine. He is a God-man. Jesus rebuked false teachers, false religious systems, healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead, performed miracles, and preached the gospel. He lived a perfect life of perfect uh, obedience to the Father. He then willingly laid down his life on the cross. His life was not taken he gave it. On the cross, the full, undiluted fury of God's wrath that the sins of his people have earned was poured out on his son, Jesus. And Jesus drank in every last drop of it. He became what the Bible calls the propitiation for our sins. The Bible says in this love, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. To propitiate is to appease or to satisfy. Jesus satisfied the wrath of God by offering himself as the ultimate and only sacrifice for sin. On the cross, our sins were imputed or counted to Christ. The question is this. If perfect righteousness is required for eternal life, how do we as guilty sinners obtain it? The answer is, in the grace of Jesus Christ, of regeneration, rebirth, God grants faith 
to, be, uh, to believe and count faith as righteousness. God's Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and just judgment, grants faith in Christ, repentance from sin. We must abandon our good works and place our full faith and trust in the work of Jesus Christ that he wrought for us on the cross. But what does it mean to repent? Most people believe that repentance is just willing oneself to uh, turn from certain sins. But, biblical, uh, but that is not a biblical repentance. The Greek term for repentance is metanoia. It literally means the change of one's mind. Many teach that in order to repent, one must simply change his mind about sin. The re genuine repentance comes from God's grant. When God grants repentance, Acts 5.30. When this repentance is granted, our minds are indeed changed, but everything about us changed. Our desires are changed. Our affections are changed. We begin to love what God loves and hate God, what God hates. This is beautiful uh, scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5. Look at our, uh, ourselves and ask ourselves this question. Am I trusting in Christ alone for my salvation? Has there been, any, has there been a change in my life? Do I love what God loves? Do I hate what God hates? Do I have a hunger for his word? A pastor had dinner at, uh, at the home of a couple in his church. After he left, his wife said to uh, the husband, I think he stole our spoon. This bothered her for a whole year. A year later, the couple had the pastor for dinner again. Unable to resist, the wife asked, did you steal our spoon last year? The pastor replied, no, I put it inside your Bible. Do I have a hunger for his word? How many people are really meditating God's word? Do I have a love for the brethren? Do I stand up for Christ in the face of persecution? Is there an increased pattern of holiness in my life? Do I grieve over my sin? I think it's important to expand upon the last question a bit. One of the hallmarks of a genuine Christian is that he grieves over his sin. The Bible speaks of two kinds of sin, uh, sorrow over sin, the worldly sorrow and a godly sorrow. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, the worldly sorrow leads to death. What is worldly sorrow? A worldly sorrow is the sorrow that, which is horizontally oriented. Uh, in, in other words, it is a sorrow that is uh, centered around ourselves. What, a worldly sorrow is, is the kind of sorrow that says, what would happen to me if my sin were to be exposed? And what would be the consequences to me? The worldly sorrow speaks to cover up our sin because we do not want the con consequences of our sin. One who has worldly sorrow over sin would go right back to sin if he could get uh, away with it and uh, no one would know about it. This sorrow leads to death, eternal death. But there is another kind of sorrow over sin that is godly sorrow. A godly sorrow results in a repentance without regret uh, leading to salvation. A godly sorrow over sin is the sorrow which is vertically oriented. In other words, a godly sorrow is directed not toward ourselves but toward God. A godly sorrow is when we grieve over our sin. Because we understand that our sin grieves God. And we do not want to grieve him. How many times we grieved him this year? God has been so good, so kind, so generous, and so merciful to us. But we have sinned against him. We have despised his good, good gifts to us. We have presumed upon his kindness and patience. We have acted altogether selfishly. We have mocked his holiness. And yet God demonstrates his love uh, toward us in, in, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that Christ, Christians cannot sin. Christians can and do sin. 
A Christian stumbles into sin, but he does not swim in sin. A genuine Christian does not enjoy sin. He does not look for opportunities to sin. When a Christian sins, it grieves him. And just as much as we should want a savior from hell, we should want a savior from sin. The man who wants a savior from hell but does not want a savior from sin has a savior from neither. If you're not certain where you would spend eternity if you were to die today, then I beg of you, dear one, to get really honest before God, confess your sins to Him. Confess your utter need of His mercy and forgiveness. Ask Him to save you. Repent of sin and place your trust in Jesus Christ. If you will come to Him in godly sorrow over your sin, if you genuinely desire to follow Him in obedience for the rest of your life, He will save you. All the Father gives uh, to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. John 6, 37. Isn't that a wondrous promise? If you will come to Christ empty-handed, seeking forgiveness of your sins, He will not cast you out. He will save you. The evidence of your conversation and new life in Christ will be a, a lifetime of obedience and bearing good, good fruits to His glory. Are you thinking about what's going to happen next? What's going to happen tomorrow at the hospital, in the court, in every situation of your lives? He's there tomorrow and the day after and the day after even in the eternity's future, because He doesn't belong to our time. He's self-existent. He's willing to take us to His timelessness. Yes, our future is potentially secured by Christ. To pay the penalty of sin, we can be confident that sins of our past, present, and future are forgiven all because of the perfection of Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Would you repeat after me this beautiful verse? As we enter into a new year, may this be the verse for all of us, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know, please repeat after me, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope we can face tomorrow because he lives we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next year God is there to remove that fear because he's there tomorrow and we are with him there is hope as we listen to this song shall we all close our eyes and bow down our heads maybe there is someone here today who needs this eternal life who needs Jesus to forgive and to give that strength to press on to face tomorrow if that is the case please open up your heart and talk to God. Every anxious thought that steals my breath, it's a heavy weight upon my chest. As I lie awake and wonder what the future will hold Help me to remember that you're in control Cause you're my courage when I worry in the dead of night You're my strength cause I'm not strong enough to win this fight You are greater than the battle raging in my mind I will trust you and I will fear no more 
I will lift my eyes, I will lift my cares, lay them in your hands, I'll leave them there. When the wind and waves are coming, you shelter me. Even though I'm in the storm, the storm is not in me. Cause you're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. You're my strength cause I'm not strong enough to win this fight. Cause you are greater than the battle raging in my mind. I will trust you, Lord, and I will fear no You have overcome No darkness can overwhelm me Cause you've already won No power can come against me Cause you have overcome No darkness can overwhelm me Cause you've already won You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night You're my strength cause I'm not strong enough to win this fight and you are greater than the battle raging in my mind and i will trust you lord and i will fear no today maybe God spoke to you through his word and if you're one of them you could talk to the pastors and the wonderful prayer team that we have here we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow but we know that he lives tomorrow and there is no fear and he's he's going to be there with us as we head into a new year 2021 Let's be thankful to God for this year. He's been with us faithfully. He led us through this painful time. I'll read this verse as a blessing for all of us. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the powers that work in us, to him be glory in church of Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Enosh. He's been such a gift to this church and just even in the office. I know. Thank you. I'm hoping personally that he never actually leaves. <laughs> 
but God will have his way. I just wanted to let you know the church office will be closed this coming week so we can take a little break. We'll be back open on January 4th. But next Sunday, January 3rd, we kick off the new sermon series called Resource, and it's bringing us into the 2021 vision that we've started to outline for you and the calling that God has on this church. So we hope to see you next Sunday. And in the meantime, happy new year. Thanks for coming today.